Hi, I'm Ben and I'm creating an interactive comic book and by that I mean a physical printed comic book with QR codes inside and these QR codes allow you to interact with the story world in fun and interesting ways such as talking to characters, battling them, going through doors, buying or picking up items, opening chests, fishing and loads more. I'm really excited about this project and there's so much to talk about it's hard to know where to begin so let's see. So I started this project in September 2022 and I just kind of wanted a way of making a book interactive. I thought it was going to be like an interactive novel where you'd like read part of the story and then maybe use a QR code to enhance the story in some way. But very quickly it became more of like an RPG game where you could interact with the world in all sorts of different ways. So like an RPG you've got health, you've got experience, you've got money, you've got an inventory and all of these things are going to be affected by what you do in the book so for example you could battle someone and lose health you could battle someone and win and then maybe open a chest to get an item which would go in your inventory so pretty much everything is done through this main dashboard area you've got lots of icons kind of like apps and one of those is the QR code reader which you'll point at the book and there'll be loads of different QR codes that you can interact with the, the gameplay loop is kind of a cross between say Pokemon and a point and click adventure so very often you'll talk to a character who will want something and you have to figure out where to get it and then maybe you'll give that to them and that will unlock a new area of the, of the game or maybe it will give you an item that you need to give to someone else and so on and a lot of these things you can't do until you're strong enough so that's where it's a bit more like Pokemon because you know in Pokemon you'd get a gym badge when you're strong enough which would allow you to go to the next area so it's kind of like that like there are different lots of different areas and often what's stopping you going to the next area is that you're not strong enough yet so for example maybe we uh, go to this forest and we go into the cabin and we talk to this guy and maybe he wants some mushroom soup so now we've got to figure out how to make some mushroom soup so we go to another place, we maybe get some mushrooms, we learn how to cook, and we cook him a mushroom soup, we bring it back to this guy, and he maybe gives us another item in return to say thanks, and so on, you, you know the kind of thing. The cool thing about it being in a book, well there's a lot of cool things, but one cool thing is that theoretically you could just skip ahead, you could skip to any page, and there's nothing really in the book that stops you doing that, apart from maybe a few special places where it kind of knows that you didn't get there properly, so maybe it's locked or you know nothing happens when you scan the QR codes, but in general it's a real adventure because you can just go wherever you want, do whatever you want. There is kind of an overall story to it, which I'll talk about in a later video, but generally it really is very open world, you can just do whatever you want. So maybe you want to get really good at battling, you can actually open a shop. I'm getting ahead of myself, we're going to have to talk about each thing I think one by one. So let's talk about the inventory. So like most RPGs, uh, all the stuff you collect will go into your inventory. You'll notice that it's colour coded so this sort of aqua colour is fish, apart from this one because yellow is an ingredient, you can cook with all of those. Pink is a food item. Weapons actually come in four different colours. You've got red, orange, blue and purple which we'll talk about later and so on. The items aren't grouped so you'll notice that I've got lots of mushrooms here but they're, they're not all under one mushroom, they're, they're individual and that's because uh, each item actually has a quality and a rareness and this generates the overall value. So you could actually have lots of different mushrooms and some of them could be better quality than others and then there's a few different things we can do we can eat it which will give us health we can feed it to Lovesy who is our companion and they will get some health we can send it to our shop which I'll talk about later and we can drop it if we don't want it anymore so this is the main character default um, you basically are him in the book but it's not thrown in your face you know you're, you're still very much you while you're playing it it's just nice to kind of give it a face and his companion is Lovesy, so Lovesy is kind of your pet, so th this is my health and my current level, but I also look after Lovesy and I can give him some love, I can feed him from my inventory, let's feed him that, and I can have a look at his stats. So he's pretty full, he's feeling loved, he's had a lot of fun, every time you play a mini game that will go up a bit. Uh, he's pretty tired, so I'm going to turn the light off and let him have some sleep, and he will fall asleep in about five minutes. 
and he comes with you throughout your whole adventure. He will sometimes comment on things. Maybe you go to a certain place and he'll have something to say about it. Or she, I don't, I really don't know. My, my kids say it's a girl. Uh, I sometimes call it it. And it's a good idea to keep Lovesy happy because he will give you uh, experience bonuses when you win battles. He will actually give you experience penalties if he's sad when you win a battle. And he's just cute. So it's a good idea to just keep him happy. Now there's something really cool that I want to tell you that I haven't told you yet. So the game's got its own QR code reader and this serves three benefits. So number one, the QR codes can be a bit simpler because they don't have to store the whole URL within its code. It can just store a little code, you know, some letters and numbers. And so this, that makes it so it can be smaller and easier to read. The second benefit is that you're not switching between your camera and the game all the time. Can you imagine that? It would just be a nightmare. So it really needed its own QR code reader. But the third unexpected benefit that I kind of realized while developing this is really cool. So if the game's got its own QR code reader, that means you could scan any QR code in the world, whether it's one in the book or if it's one on the street or one that you've made yourself or just one that you see somewhere, you could scan that. And why would you want to do that? Well, what it would do is plant an NPC version of yourself onto that QR code and the next person who scans that QR code will fight your NPC and if they win they'll become the new champion of that code and if they lose you'll get some gold. So suddenly the whole world becomes this crazy playground of QR codes and people trying to win that real estate on that QR code which I think is really really cool. One of my favourite sections of the book is where you can get on a bus and uh, go to the town and maybe it's night time but if you actually did it uh, in half an hour in real life uh, it'll be daytime and you're scanning the same QR codes but it knows which page to send you to based on uh, it actually switches between day and night every half hour. I want every page to almost offer you something new. So the next thing I'll show you is the cooking. You can pick any three items to cook with, any three uh, ingredients. So I'm just going to go for apple, fish and garlic there. Apparently I'm the first person ever to discover little apple brunch and uh, it's worth 89 I can uh, have a look at that. It's quality 16 and it's rareness 10. So that would actually, the value is how much I can sell it for, but it's also how much health it will give me. So the, the health and the um, weapons power and the economy is very much all linked together in this game. And because of the way the cooking works, there's actually about, about 12,000 combinations of things that you could make and it generates a name based on the ingredients that you put in and a few other little tricks to try and give it a unique name. Every now and again you'll win a battle and it will tell you to go to a certain page for a reward and you will open a chest and you can get all sorts of items in there. Uh, it'll often be weapons, sometimes it'll be gold, sometimes it'll be ingredients. The ingredients have to be sourced throughout the book so you might find out, oh I have to get beans from this guy this guy sells cabbage, uh, I can find mushrooms on this shelf and all sorts of things like that so you have to kind of uh, know where you're going to source all these, these ingredients but every now and again in a, in a chest you'll get an ingredient that you, you actually don't know how to get normally so you'll be able to cook with that and uh, make something that you haven't made before. When you get enough money you'll actually be able to open a shop and you can put any items you want in your shop and sell them. Now you can actually go to the shop info button and it's got a QR code on it and if your friend scans that QR code they can now visit your shop in real life, not in real life, um, but they will be able to visit your shop via the market and they will be able to uh, buy things from your shop. Once you open a shop you'll also get notifications from all the different characters in the book. Uh, asking for certain things so it's a good idea to look around you can look at other characters inventories to try and buy stuff off of them you can go to your fr your real friends shops and see if they've got the things that you need very often they'll ask for things that you've already got in your shop so you don't have to go looking for them there's a fishing mechanic you can buy different rods and different rods will have different powers and you just tap the screen as fast as you can to, to catch the fish uh, with a better rod you don't have to tap quite as fast and depending on how rare it is will affect uh, how hard it is to catch and how much it's worth. And there are multiple places you can go fishing in the book and different ones will have different fish but they will all have the really common fish. So let's talk a bit about the battles. 
So at the start of a battle, you'll be drawn five random items from your inventory. Five ra random weapons. You've collected weapons throughout the book, and you're going to get five of them now. And as mentioned before, each item has a rareness and a quality, and this will determine the value, and it will also determine the attack power. And I'm against this guy here, Peon 3, and these are his. And you'll also notice the background is orange, uh, which means that ideally, I want to try and play an orange weapon to match that background. Now there's a few different outcomes. Now if you play the correct colour, your weapon will do full damage. Unless they also play the correct colour, in which case you'll both do half damage. If I play the correct colour and they play the wrong colour, then mine will do full damage and theirs will do half damage. And if we both play the wrong colour, it will completely clash and neither of us will do any damage. So we both played the correct colour, uh, so mine did half damage and theirs did half damage. So you'll notice the background is now purple. It, let's say we didn't have any purples, we could still play the wrong colour and hope that they maybe pick up a card. Because if they pick up a card and we've played the wrong colour, uh, ours will do half damage, but if they, if they play the wrong colour and we play the wrong colour, we won't do any damage. Luckily we've got a purple and he's dead now. So that's the end. I won. I gained some experience, uh, which is divided by two because my companion is actually sad. One of the main reasons you want to keep your companion happy is because you'll get extra experience. And I can turn to 47 for a reward, which is a chest. Let's have a look, see what I got. So I got a new weapon. You can actually battle player to player, so you can battle with your friends. Um, if they scan your QR code, you'll be in a battle with them. The funny thing about battles is even if you quit the game, you could even turn your phone off or go on a different device. You will still be in that battle, especially with NPCs, because the, the point is that I don't want people just to quit when they think they're going to be losing a battle. You know, you kind of got to deal with the consequences. And now Loves is asleep. Some of the QR codes will open Spotify playlists to really set the mood of that particular area. And the cool thing about this is for any QR code in the book, I can actually at any point, uh, even when the book's published and printed, I can go back and add more content to those same QR codes. It's very casual, it's the kind of thing that you could just play every day. Just carry the book around with you in your bag and away you go. The book is kind of in different sections, so there's a there's a beginning section which kind of helps you get to know the, the game and the book. And then it kind of gets a bit harder and leaves you to your own devices, but what I really wanted was a bit like a Metroidvania, reasons to go back. I didn't want the pages to just become redundant after a certain point. Um, there'll be things on page 100 that you then need to go back to page 5 and, and do. And it's all kind of jumbled up, but it's jumbled up within its within their own sections. So for example, when you go through a door on page 5, it's never going to say go to page 200. It might say go to page 15, which will be quite close by. And that's just so that when you, when you skip ahead, you go through a door or whatever, um, you're not seeing loads of spoilers. Uh, it'll be quite exciting when you know you've kind of entered a new section of, of the book because you're accessing pages that you never saw before. I want there to be lots of surprises and mysteries and really cool ways to interact with the book. I want there to be all kinds of different things you can do. Lots of different quests and little mini games. And there's still so much I want to talk about. I want to talk about the stories and the main characters and all the different places and the inspirations that I used to create this and the sort of aesthetic that I'm going for and what's left to do. Basically, to cut a long story short, what's left to do is that I've done about a third of the book and now I need to do the other two thirds. But I got a copy printed so I could really test it and see how it feels to play. I don't want it to be annoying uh, scanning different QR codes all the time, but throughout developing this I've had to scan a lot of QR codes on my screen and it's been fine. You get used to it very quickly. It's probably going to be about 200 pages and the target age range will be sort of whatever you'd class Pokemon as. So mainly kids, but I want adults to enjoy it as well. There is absolutely loads to talk about. For pretty much all the things that I've said, I could make a whole video about it. But for now, what I really want to invite you to do is download the PDF in the description of this video. Uh, it's got the first kind of 64 pages and you'll be able to go to the site, sign up and start scanning the QR codes in the PDF. It won't be as nice as having the actual book, um, but you'll be able to start playing it and it's a demo. Just bear in mind, um, it's very new, I'm still working on it as we speak, there are going to be bugs, there are going to be things that aren't finished, 
Um, there are going to be things that change daily and you're like, why, why did that change? But it'd be really cool for you to be a part of this journey. I think it's a really exciting project. I think it's really different. I haven't seen anything else like it before. Maybe there are, but I, I haven't seen them. And uh, I'm just really enjoying working on it. So if you want to see any more of this uh, and see how I get on, I'm going to try and do regular videos breaking down all the different things I've spoken about, how they work, why I made certain choices, and talking about all the different features in detail. So if you want to see some more of that, you can subscribe and give it a like. And I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Is this something that you would play? Are you interested? I really appreciate your support because I don't know how I'm going to get this project out there into the world other than this. Um, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.